Well, first of all, thank you very much indeed for uh, joining us uh, today. We really appreciate you taking the time, so thank you. Thank you very much for having me here. So we're talking about uh, social determinants of uh, mental health. The whole conference is talking about social determinants of uh, mental health, and you've been uh, heading up uh, the task force. Uh, tell us a little bit about, first of all, about why the task force was set up. The president of the APA, Dr. Vivian Pender, made social determinants of mental health her presidential theme. And I think she is really visionary in making that happen because this is an important topic that is affecting the whole healthcare and especially mental health care because there are some unique issues that affect people with mental illnesses. One of them is the stigma about mental illness. And because of that stigma, people don't get good mental health care. There is supposed to be mental health care parity. In reality, it doesn't exist. People with mental illnesses don't get the care that they need. Second fact, which is quite embarrassing for the society, is that more of psychiatric patients in the US today are in jails and prisons than in hospitals. What an embarrassing fact. And that is not because of biology. It is because of social factors. And another factor that is unique is that people with serious mental illnesses, like schizophrenia, die young. They die 15 to 20 years earlier than the general population. And that longevity gap has been increasing in the last 50, 60 years. So there is something going on that is social, not biological, that we need to change. And what have you found out? What are the major findings of your, uh, your uh, task force? The task force found that these various factors clearly have an impact on people with mental illnesses. Uh, as I said, the hospitalization rates, uh, death rates, as well as uh, rates of going into jails and prisons have been rising. Right. Th and that needs to change. And several of these things are under our control. We can potentially do something to reduce them. And that's why the task force thought that we need to come up with a plan about how to assess them, how to train people in what they are, how to evaluate them, and importantly also, how to use them for new prevention and intervention strategies. One of the things that uh, always puzzles me is uh, in the community where obviously social determinants happen, uh, how easy is it to provide uh, mental health care? I mean, it's sometimes hard to get health care full stop. And so how do you get mental health care when you're in the community and you're, and you're struggling? But that is an excellent point. And that is a good example of mental health care inequity. Right. That, so your, the answer to your question depends on what community we are talking about. Communities, they are more affluent, more highly educated people coming from the majority community, they often get much better mental health care than people who are suffering because of structured racism, right. as well as poverty, low education, low socioeconomic uh, status. Those are the facts that really affect the mental health care and mental health care equity. So what recommendations did you come up with? This is just the beginning. I think the system of mental health care today is really broken in the US. That needs to change. I feel it is not going to change overnight, but we need to make a beginning. And the first part of that is realizing how important it is. Next would be doing more work on that. Third would be to begin to assess these social determinants in everyday practice do some research upon why they affect, and importantly, focus on how we can reduce their impact on individual patient as well as at the public health level. Thank you ever so much indeed for joining us today. Really fascinating to talk to you, and thank you for your time. Thank you.